welcome to episode 10 of Joey Foe with me, Joey. Today's episode is going to be a little bit about um, a summary of Malifaux, my opinions on it as playing a few games, painting up a couple of different crews, so going to start a new one and some of the plastic stuff that they've got coming out now. Um, yeah, and just an oversight, so uh, I asked a few of you on Facebook and Twitter what your thoughts were on Malifaux, what got you into it, what things do you like and dislike and I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of mine. So uh, before we move on here's a little bit of a, an intro on the weird um, Malifaux website of what they say about Malifaux. Based in an alternative earth Malifaux uses gothic steampunk Victorian horror with a dose of the world west to inject fun and depth into the magical lawlessness of a world rife with monsters, necropunks, man-machine hybrids, gunslingers and power-hungry politicos, actively using character-driven stories to define the world of Malifaux. Seek your fortune in this fast-paced, brutal 32mm tabletop miniature skirmish game. Assemble your crew and stake your claim. I think it sums it up pretty nicely. Um, it's got loads of different themes. I mean, they've got some new Asian stuff coming out, um, which I saw is in the plastics and oh, it's so cool looking. Um, definitely going to get some. I've got Rasputina, I've painted up Lucius and sent him off. Um, and they've just got some really awesome stuff. I mean, I love Seamus, who's really awesome looking. I kind of am creeped out still by the Neverborn. Uh, the Outcasts are awesome. And yeah, there's, there's such a wide range of stuff that they have. Um, so, a few things that I definitely love about it. I love the miniatures all of them. I love the look of them, the style of them, the differences in them. I think they're wicked. And going, looking at some of the new stuff that they've got coming out, the stuff that they sent to me as well is just amazing. The plastics are brilliant. They've got, I mean, they, they've even got uh, Lazarus now who's kind of moving with the joints. It's cool. I mean, it's, te it's scary for me to build, but I mean, it's awesome. And I think it's kind of revolutionary in the sense of the cards and you know the differences there. We'll talk a bit more about the cards and what you guys had to say about it, but the miniatures, brilliant. As a game, I'm gonna make references to Warhammer Fantasy because it's obviously my, I guess, main, um, as I do a lot of tournaments in uh, Warhammer Fantasy and it was my first, so it's my point of reference really. Uh, and I, I am aware it's a completely different style of game, but the purpose of Devil's Advocate I'm going to have to compare the two a little bit um, but compared to a game like that it's a lot more casual and it has a lot more flexibility in the sense that uh, you know as I've said before Wood Elves being a very old army a very old rules very old book um, I'm kind of always in the having the feeling that I've lost before I've started whereas with Malifaux it's not just killing everything uh, and then whoever has the points or stones wins. Um, you know, there's schemes, there's objectives, and those count towards winning. So even if you've killed off everything of your opponent's crew, it doesn't necessarily mean you've absolutely won it. it, could still be a draw. And even if you think, oh God, he's killed everything of mine, you could still be in for the running, which I found out with um, the last game that I had with um, Rob. I, I still, we still had a draw, which was really awesome. So um, yeah, there's, it's really easy to, to kind of have a relaxed game, to not um, have that much pressure, because it can really go either way. And uh, that being said, with tournaments I hear it's not uh, great for it, because it's not very balanced. And obviously you can pick your crew after certain things are decided to make sure that you've got, I don't know, the best crew to win with, with a certain objective, if one crew's not as well matched for it, which is often the case, um, you know, it's hard to create a perfectly balanced game when there's so many variables and the differences between the crews and, you know, there's there's lots of stuff to go into it and it's got to be really hard to do, so, to do that, but um, yeah, I think tournaments still need tweaking because uh, from what other people have, have said it's it's really difficult to do um, and to have like a fair point system as well but uh, to just pick up and play it's really not complicated at all I mean you've got the little hand the cards which 
albeit tiny print, which is uh, was mentioned in a tweet that I got earlier, is really awesome. You don't have to hulk around this massive book, and uh, everything that you need is there. I mean, if you don't want to play too seriously, you can pretty much just go off whatever is in those cards. So after what four or five months of um, playing Malifaux and uh, about ten of playing Warhammer Fantasy, I'd say um, the only thing that not niggles me, but uh, that I don't get to do with Malifaux is fully customise and do my own thing with it. Uh, what I've realised, I guess, is the more hobbyist side of things, is I like to convert stuff, I like to make it my own, I like to make it unique, and I get a lot of inspiration off TV shows. I don't know why it's specifically TV shows. Um, but, you know, I like to sit there and watch some stuff and I'll get inspiration of it, and it will all kind of click in my mind as to what units or models would be perfect for this character that I'm currently watching and you know I, it's kind of how my brain works in that way but I can't really do that with Malifaux, There's, they're all set characters, they've all got storylines and the fluff, albeit fantastic, it's really difficult to put your own print on it which is um, you know part of wargaming and miniature painting, you want to make it your own. I mean I don't know how that can really be rectified, maybe if they had a crew um, with you know, nameless crew, mercenary team, maybe one for each faction that had uh, a set of options that you could set, spend soul stones on that was just, you know, pretty plain that you could kind of do whatever you want with and name them as you want to. I mean, it would be difficult to, um, I guess, make lists and put crews together, but I'm no game designer. But that would be one thing that I think would be nice to have the option to do is, is to, to be able to fully have your own unique crew that is just yours because if you've got two Seamus crews the paint can be different but they're still both Seamus. So something to think on, what do you think? So the card flipping. Um, at first I couldn't wrap my head around it. I, it really really needed explaining to me with um, Nipply Rich, my good old mentor. Uh, and I, it was really difficult to kind of grasp. I mean, I'm getting the hang of it now, but even so, if I don't play a game uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks, then I've kind of forgotten the rules again, which has currently happened. So um, I'm gonna set up a game this week for Malifaux and video, do a, bit, do a battle report for you guys. But yeah, it's, um, it's actually awesome because, I mean, as much as I love dice, which I do, it's nice to have a fake deck and it's to, to flip and there's still the randomness of it all but the system's really cool and I think that really really sets it apart. I mean there's obviously other reasons but the fact that there's no dice involved is is really cool and I've heard a lot of this as well that you know it's it's a great system, it works well and it's still got that you know randomness to it. So another thing that I definitely love is the is the the models themselves now much more so now that they're coming into plastic because just setting up the dark decks which I've been doing um, last week whenever I got the chance to the detail is so much clearer I mean metal's great but uh, a little damage a little knock and you know I had such a problem with Lucius's cane and it's really thin and you know it breaks and stuff does and metal isn't as detailed as, as plastic stuff and it, it just can't be it's very difficult to do so so the transformation with these already awesome looking models into plastics with just hyper detail is going to make it easier for painting easier for detail highlighting and just to see what's going on because often what I do with miniatures is I spray them white or black usually white now um, and I do a wash over just so I can see all of the details and especially if it's metal it's sometimes hard to see so I, I love that it's going into the plastic side of things because the detail on them is amazing. So really excited to see the new, some of the new crews that are coming out of which I will definitely be purchasing. So before I move on to what you guys said about Malifaux, what, you got, what got you into it, what you like and what you don't like about it, what do you think on some of the points that I've just made? Do you like the plastics? Have you seen any? Are you picking up crews? What crews do you have, play or want to play? And uh, what do you think about my mercenary idea? Any thoughts? I'm not sure if it could ever work, but I think it'd be a good move. Um, so, what you said on Facebook and Twitter. 
On Facebook, Mark Norris says he has Arcanist and the Showgirls got into it through the Red Steel Club at Worthy Painting and said so he just loves the models. Have to agree with you. James Swan on Facebook says the diversity of the models and the fact that you don't have to paint the same thing 50 times. Totally true. I was painting loads of wood elves and stuff over the, uh, just before the tournament that I did this weekend and as cool as it is, sometimes all you can all you can dream about for the rest of the evening is painting the same three colours. Drove me nuts. I think I'm still a little bit weird from it. A lot of you on Facebook say the fluff, and the fluff is amazing. I've recently bought the 1.5 book, and it's just so good. There's loads of separate sections as well, so I was kind of skimming through initially, found myself reading a paragraph and read the rest of it. So yeah, it's really good, really intricate, and it kind of all links together really nicely. Dustin, Aaron and Niles from Facebook said so they really they got into it because of the models and the variety of them compared to some of the other gaming systems because they are really different from the others. I mean, yes, they're steampunk, but in such a wide variety of ways. Joseph on Twitter said the art style and the mismatch of themes, uh, what keeps me is the game itself, would love a few tweaks. What tweaks would you like? Quite a few of you on Twitter have said uh, the fact that you don't have to pay a small fortune in order to play it. Yes, the starter sets are really cheap. Um, I've recently been looking at getting a couple more and maybe doing a, a giveaway or two, but they're really, really well priced for the fact that you can just kind of pick everything up for about 30 quid to play a whole game. Will Lambert says the whole backstory, the look of the game and the game mechanics and the fact that you can spend longer on painting, I fully agree with you. The fact that, you know, I pretty much spent two solid weeks on Lucius and probably will do again with the next crew just to make sure everything's perfect. You don't really need to rush anything because you wouldn't, you, I mean, you could spend all of the time that you would paint in a whole army just to get the maximum amount of detail because it, it's not just being table ready, it's, you know, five miniatures, perfect standard to your best standard. So, I love that factor. Rob says he loves the models but hates the fact that the rules are so model specific and that you need a tunnelling electron mi microscope to read them. Yes, kind of see your point. They are pretty small just to get to grips with. I'll show you if you haven't seen them. I've got a couple here. Um, oh, oh, got this one. Uh, they are pretty small and I think you've got to, you know, and this one's got double so there are there is a lot of information in there but it is really helpful I'd rather these than a massive massive book but um, maybe bigger cards so Malifaux received a lot of love on Facebook and Twitter today and it was really evident and the growing popularity when I went to Worthy, Worthy, um, Worthy Gaming in Preston uh, I was gonna say Worthy Painting but it's not that at all um, and yeah got a lot of love and loads of people were playing, buying stuff and it's just growing and growing. I mean it's very different from you know Warhammer but I think that's one of its greatest appeals. Not only the models are brilliant, the system is different, it's smaller, it's casual and it's you know kind of brilliant in all of its massive fluff background, the model history, the rules, it's really intricate, really intricate and the rules um, which I've noticed recently you have to read them really really well to fully get the wording um, but you know it's it's awesome and it's only getting cooler with each new crew that's coming out so I look forward to seeing what they've got lined up in the future I'm definitely going to continue this series and um, yeah new crew of Dark Debt um, that we had sent me in the in the post. Thank you. I love it. Um, as well as uh, Willie the Demolitionist. How cool a name and full of innuendo. If you're not old enough, don't worry about it. Uh, but it's awesome. And Lazarus with his movable stuff. And I've got um, some puppet wars as well. So I'm just going to be painting up pretty much 
everything that's there. I will be focusing a little bit more on some game stuff as well and then delving back into the tactics and talking through some of the rules and some of the factions. Um, I've deviated a little bit from it to focus on the painting project because I had Lucius going on but I will be coming back to you know explaining some more stuff so anything that you guys are having trouble with that you want talked about in some of the new episodes that are going to be coming up um, not next week but the week after I'm doing these every two weeks now and doing um, a few different episodes in the in my off week <laughs> I say off I'm still doing videos just different ones um, so yeah let me know what shows you'd want to see and I'll write them all down on my board that fell off the wall because I only put glue, um, sellotape on it, but I'll put it up there so you can see what I'll be doing. Um, so yeah, any thoughts, leave in the comments down below, like if you like this, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in two weeks for another Malifaux Monday. Bye!